Greetings. Today we're going to be talking about dyslexia screening and how to move from dyslexia screening into this plan development for children who fail that screening. My name is Denise Gibbs and I'm going to be sharing ideas with you today. If you'd like to get in touch with me, my email address and the website for the Alabama Scottish Rite Learning Centers are listed for you on this first slide. This webinar has been designed to provide you with professional development that is consistent with the requirements of the dyslexia amendments to the Alabama Administrative Code. Those dyslexia amendments were adopted unanimously by the State Board of Education on October the 8th of 2015, and they are in place in Alabama schools at this time. In implementing your dyslexia services, you may wish to consult the dyslexia resource guide that is available at the State Department of Education's website. This resource guide was initially made available to you on sept in September of 2015. It is continually updated, so you might wish to book bookmark this site so that you can go back and check for updates. Dyslexia screening is required but in the Alabama Administrative Code, and there you see the code reference. And what the code states is that students will be screened for characteristics of dyslexia using screening instruments currently in place for use in public school. We're going to be talking about screening instruments today in this webinar so that you might make some choices in your district regarding the screening instruments that will most benefit your students in your district. In developing our dyslexia screening process, we want to look carefully at what are those characteristics of dyslexia. In the Alabama Administrative Code Dyslexia Amendments, we have a definition of dyslexia. Dyslexia is defined in the Alabama Administrative Code Dyslexia Amendments as a specific learning challenge that is neurological in origin. The characteristics of dyslexia are listed for us in the definition. We, we indicate that dyslexia is characterized by difficulties with accurate and or fluent word recognition, by poor spelling and poor decoding abilities. Now the definition goes on to state that these difficulties typical, typically result because the student have, has a deficit in the phonological component of language that's unexpected in relation to their other cognitive abilities and to the provision of effective classroom instruction. The definition concludes by indicating that there may be secondary consequences that will occur in the areas of reading comprehension because of the student's lack of experience in uh, opportunities to read. Now a note that comes to you also from the Dyslexia Resource Guide is, and I'm just going to read this so that we can then talk about it a little bit, the implementation of our Dyslexia Services Plans uh, through PST and our RTI framework should not delay special education evaluation if a specific learning disability is suspected. If a parent or teacher requests a special education evaluation for a student due to a suspected learning disability, that request should be considered by the IEP team. If it is possible, I'm sorry, it is possible for a student to participate in dyslexia services, including dyslexia specific intervention, while a special education evaluation is being completed. So then to just reiterate just a bit, we want to be sure that in no way do our dyslexia services uh, delay a special education evaluation if a specific learning disability is suspected. Now, when we conduct our dyslexia screening, we want to understand that we have not in any way through this screening made a diagnosis of dyslexia or determined that a student has dyslexia. What we've done is we've identified that the student may be exhibiting characteristics of dyslexia and may benefit from dyslexia services as outlined in uh, our RTI and PST frameworks in Alabama schools. If the student does not make the expected gains that we hope for through our dyslexia services through RTI, then we may find that the student needs in more intensive and more individualized services. And at that point, a referral for special education eligibility may be initiated. 
Through this eligibility determination process, additional evaluation will be, have been conducted, and that additional evaluation may actually result in a determination that dyslexia is the condition that is the basis of the specific learning disability. Now the wording about dyslexia being a condition that is the basis of a specific learning disability is taken directly from the dyslexia guidance document from the Office of Special Education and Rehabilitation Services that was issued on October 23, 2015. If you're unfamiliar with this document, you may wish to um, look at that document in detail to understand how dyslexia might be determined to be the basis of a specific learning disability. But in any case, the point of this slide is to uh, make clear that we are not in any way making a diagnosis of dyslexia through our screening process nor through our evaluation process that might be part of our special education eligibility determination which would occur at a later point perhaps or at any point that a, a specific learning disability is suspected. Now let's talk about the dyslexia screening process. In our dyslexia screening process, what we're going to do is we're going to determine uh, if a student uh, could benefit from our dyslexia services. And what we want to make sure is that we understand that poor or failing grades are not in any way a prerequisite for a student to participate in dyslexia screening, nor is it are they failing grades a prerequisite for a student to receive dyslexia services. The dyslexia screening uh, for students in grades 1 through 12 uh, begins as students participate in the universal screening. The first step in the dyslexia screening in Alabama is in fact the universal screening that all students will participate in. In grades 1 through 12, we find in Alabama right now there are a number of tools being used. Whatever your district is using, uh, that would be the first step in your dyslexia screening, your universal screener. Now, uh, in Alabama, we are finding that some districts may be using Global Scholar, others may be using STAR, uh, some may be using ACT Aspire, and any number of other universal screening tools. If the student scores below the district's benchmark on the universal screening in reading, then they should be further screened for the additional characteristics of dyslexia. In kindergarten, students who score below the benchmark range at the winter or spring benchmark period uh, would, on the universal screener, would then be screened for characteristics of dyslexia. Um, we wouldn't be screening, we would not be screening our kindergarten students uh, any earlier than uh, winter and spring in terms of characteristics of dyslexia. If the student in kindergarten uh, scores below the benchmark range uh, in the uh, fall kindergarten screening, then whatever the district would normally do to support that student uh, would be done. Um, but as far as dyslexia screening, that would not be initiated in kindergarten until after the results of the winter or the spring benchmark. Now, for students in grades 1 through 12, the benchmark uh, or the universal screening that's done uh, all three times of the years uh, of the school year would be uh, considered in terms of do we need to move forward with a dyslexia screening. So, in kindergarten, the dyslexia, the framework for our dyslexia screening would consider these four skills. Um, and they are the early literacy skills that we typically uh, know uh, to look at for our kindergarten students. We'll look at letter naming fluency, letter sound or initial sound fluency, phoneme segmentation fluency, and nonsense word fluency. If the student scores in the below benchmark area in three of these four skills, then the PST needs to swing into action to develop and consider the components that would be necessary to provide the student with the appropriate services, including the dyslexia services that will be outlined a little bit later. 
um, our framework for dyslexia screening for grades 1 through 12 um, will begin with the universal screening process and then for those students who score below benchmark on that universal screening we will uh, look uh, first at their ability to uh, read words accurately in a, a grade level passage that we'll provide them with and we'll look at their accuracy level and we'll take the total number of words that they attempt during passage reading and we will divide that into the number of words they read correctly to determine their percentage of accuracy. If you want to have the students read three passages uh, for one minute each, you'll have maybe a little more um, reliability by using the median score of the three passages. Now, uh, in addition to the passage reading, we're going to consider how well the student decodes nonsense words, how well they decode real words, uh, and then their spelling skills. So those four things will be considered in our uh, dyslexia screening. The passage reading accuracy, decoding of nonsense words, decoding of real words, and then spelling skills. Um, now we're going to look at some tools that we can use for our screening of students in kindergarten and then for our screening of students in grades 1 through 12. Many of the tools we're going to talk about are free or would be available to your district for a minimal cost. Now in looking at screening, I think it's good to take a look at the big picture and a good way to see the big picture is to look at the screening or dyslexia needs assessment profile that's included in the dyslexia resource guide. We have a profile for students in grades 1 through 12 and it looks something like this. I'll try to enlarge it just a bit so that you can see it on your screen. And so you see that we have identifying information, um, a place to list the names of the individuals who are on the student's um, team that is considering the uh, results of this screening and then the date that the team met and the date that the information was shared with parents. Um, you might want to note that uh, sharing the results of the screening and of the um, dyslexia services plan uh, with parents is required in the Alabama Administrative Code dyslexia amendments. On the profile form that you see, we have a place to put the name of the tool that we used the skill that we are assessing, and there you see the word reading, phonemic decoding, and spelling, as well as passage reading with accuracy. We have grayed out, if you will, gray boxes for the um, uh, areas that would indicate a concern. So you've got moderate risk and high risk, and you've got the criteria for the score to be listed in those particular boxes. The criteria for passing or failing the screening is given for you on this form. If the student scores are in or below the moderate risk or frustration reading level for three of the four skills, the student should be referred to the PST for determination of needed intervention services, including dyslexia specific intervention, accommodations, assistive technology. And there you see on the dyslexia plan that occurs at the bottom of this form what kinds of services the team might recommend. So that's what our process will look like uh, when we're done and we have the information to, um, to talk about. Now for kindergarten we have a similar form and identifying information and the date of the meetings and the date that it was shared, the information was shared with our parents. And now you have a place to put the name of the tool that you used and the results, whether they're in the well below benchmark category or the below benchmark. And you see the criteria uh, for passing uh, the dyslexia screening or failing the dyslexia screening would be that um, if the student's scores are uh, below benchmark or well below benchmark in the gray boxes for three of these uh, screening indicators then they will be considered to have failed the dyslexia screening for kindergarten and you see down at the bottom of the form we have a place to put the components of the dyslexia services plan. So that gives you kind of the big picture of our uh, dyslexia screening and um, the graphic organizer that we might use to summarize those results as we have our discussions in our PST. Those forms are included in the dyslexia resource 
guide in the appendices. Now, in terms of uh, screening materials for kindergarten, uh, those materials can come from Dibbles, from AmesWeb, Easy CBM, and also a fourth tool called the Phonological Awareness Literacy Screening, or PALS, for kindergarten that was developed in the state of Virginia. Now, in terms of materials for your screening for older children in grades 1 through 12, um, we've got a number of places to begin. Um, we're going to uh, visit the uh, Intervention Central website in just a second. And when we go to the Intervention Central website, we can take a passage from any of our text materials for grades 1 through 12 that we use in our district and take that uh, those passages to the um, Intervention Central uh, passage uh, uh, oral reading fluency passage generator and we'll create a wonderful tool to use to make this an easy process. So to begin, I'm going to take you to a passage that I have stored on my computer. This is an eighth grade passage from a textbook. The uh, title is Pioneers and you see the passage that I have selected and prepared for us to use. I'm going to copy that passage and then we're going to go to the Intervention Central website and we're going to um, when we get to the Intervention Central website this is a total totally free service I'm going to put the title of this is Pioneers and it is my eighth grade sample text and I am going to put uh, the name the author of this passage um, I'll probably put our school district and so we'll say um, school district. So this would be Madison County or whatever your district might be, if I can spell it. That's interesting. All right, so now I'm ready to paste into this little box the passage that I had um, collected and I can ask it to download it as an Acrobat Reader or PDF file. And then in about that amount of time, I can have my passage ready to use for my passage reading accuracy. And so there you see your score sheet. And it took that passage and it numbered each one of the words so that it's easy for me to calculate in one minute how many words did the child attempt to read by marking out the words in which they made errors. I can know how many errors they made and calculate their accuracy. It also generates a page without the numbers for you to then put in front of the student for them to read. So a sheet for you to use for scoring and a sheet for the student to use for reading. I find this to be a really helpful tool and hope you will as well. So that's uh, Intervention Central. It allows you to take any passage from any text that you are using and turn it into an accuracy level determination passage for any grade. You can also find passages to use similarly within Dibbles and uh, in a book entitled Assessing Reading Multiple Measures, um, you can also um, find passages that you can use. This is a very valuable um, book We'll be talking about it for several other tools. Um, this Assessing Reading Multiple Measures second edition um, is a book that is f filled with um, assessments that you may make copies of to use in your school. So um, in this particular book, they have passages for grades one through six. Now, um, so that's our passages. Now to look for materials for um, the student's ability to decode nonsense word, one of my favorites is the test of word reading efficiency. It is a standardized test that works for students in grades 1 through 12. And um, here's one that I have filled out as a sample. Um, not a real student, obviously. Her name is Dinah Dyslexia. She's in the fourth grade. And when I was done, she was able to sound out 14 nonsense words, which is the phonemic decoding part. She, the, I can also use this for sight words. She read 52 sight words. I looked up in the manual uh, that accompanies the test uh, what those uh, raw scores mean in terms of standard scores. She got a scale score of 80 for sight words and 75 for nonsense words. There are descriptive terms that go along with those. 
you can combine those to get a total word reading efficiency score. I've been using the tower since it initially came out in 1999, I believe. The second edition came out sometime later. But here you see what the test form looks like. Here's for sight words. Uh, we're looking at it at this point for real words. And so, I'm sorry, for nonsense words. And so here are the nonsense words. And as you look, since this goes on for our older students, if you look at this column, you'll see that we even have multisyllabic nonsense words. Again, it's standardized for students in all grades. And so I take the raw score, in this case, 14 words were read correctly. And I'm able to then look up to get the standard score. While we're here, we might as well go ahead and look about sight words. That's coming on a subsequent slide. And you can see that this student read a total of 52 sight words in just 45 seconds. This is a time test. You give them 45 seconds to read as many real words and to sound out 45 seconds to sound out as many nonsense words. So with two 45 second uh, subtests, I'm able to get standard scores for both uh, nonsense word decoding and then for real word decoding or reading. Now another tool that's very useful and is absolutely free um, is Lexercise. And with Lexercise we're going to have two subtests. One is the Z screener which is a free screener for the child being able to sound out nonsense words. And um, we also are going to have uh, a subtest uh, in Lexercise uh, that is the San Diego quick test that we'll be looking at in a minute. This is a very useful tool and again it's free uh, and provides you with the ability to go online and administer this to any student in your district. I encourage you to play with this and see how this works for you and um, then you can see how that works. Okay, so um, Another tool that can be useful for nonsense word decoding is the core phonics survey. And in the core phonics survey, you're going to have the ability to ask the student to um, read a number of real words and nonsense words. So I'll make it a little larger so you can see it. This uh, was Xeroxed out of the Assessing Reading Multiple Measures book. And when I finally get to the uh, reading and decoding part, which is the part you'll use, um, you'll see that it has real words and nonsense words. If you're using this for nonsense word decoding or phonemic decoding, you're only going to use the five nonsense words that are included in each one of these sections. So this was consonant, vowel, consonant words uh, with short vowels. And here we have short vowels with consonant blends. And then we have uh, digraphs and trigraphs with short vowels. We have R controlled vowels. We have long vowel spellings with vowel consonant E and vowel pairs or vowel teams. Then we also have uh, variant vowels, low frequency vowels with different consonant spellings, and eventually you will have um, some multisyllabic words. All right, so that's the um, core phonics screener and um, we'll look at uh, the results from that in some of our um, samples that are coming up. All right, we've already looked at the tower, the test of word reading efficiency as it could be used as a for decoding or reading real words. That would be the sight word subtest and then we're going to look briefly at the San Diego quick test and the San Diego quick assessment I'll make this a little larger so that we can see it on your screen. Um, is a wonderful little tool. Um, it's available in the Assessing Reading Multiple Measures book, and it's also available as part of Lexercise, uh, their um, word reading uh, part of their screening. You can see that we ask the student to read um, lists of words that are uh, developed for uh, each grade all the way through grade 11. You have criteria for your um, uh, stop measure, your, for reaching your ceiling, and you'll be able to then go back and determine the student's independent reading level, 
uh, and instructional reading level and frustration reading level. We use the independent reading level to determine um, if the student is in fact at their grade level or uh, several grade levels below. All right, so that is your San Diego quick test, which um, we use as a, one of the tools for being able to decode real, real words. Uh, also, you'll find in that Assessing Reading Multiple Measures book um, a list of high frequency words that you can also use. Um, now let's look at spelling. We have a number of tools for spelling. We have the test of written spelling, which is a standardized test. You'll have the student read, um, here's Dinah again. She was able to spell eight words and that uh, translates to a standard score of 59. So we would be able to use that. Here are the words that Dinah was able to attempt to spell. And when she missed uh, five consecutive words, we came to our ceiling. So Dinah was able to spell only eight words uh, in taking the test of written spelling. So a nice little standardized test that you can give in about five minutes uh, for uh, to get your score for spelling for your dyslexia screening. Now there's also a tool that is actually available for free download from the internet and it's the diagnostic spelling test. And if you use the diagnostic spelling test, um, you'll download this particular tool. Here's the score sheet for you. And here's your uh, administration procedures. And what you're going to do, and then this is your, um, if you will, your, not norms exactly, but your evaluation uh, table where you can determine based on how many words the child spelled, what their grade level uh, equivalent would be and you can translate that onto your dyslexia profile form. So if the student was able to spell 14 words correctly that would translate to a grade level of 2.9, 15 words, 3.1 and so forth. And so here are the words that you'll call out to the student to determine how many words they're able to spell correctly. So that is your diagnostic spelling test. There's one called the Developmental Spelling Analysis, and it is available uh, it within a, um, a book that you can purchase, uh, which is um, listed for you there on your slide. And so this is the uh, Developmental Spelling Analysis uh, form that you can get uh, from the particular book that um, the Word Journeys book, which is a very nice resource. Um, so those are three different tools you can use for screening for spelling. Now let's look at some completed profiles with some data. And this will be, um, I hope, helpful to your um, PST as you are looking at all of the results from the different measures you used. So here's kindergarten. We'll do it first. Um, the Dibbles 6 tool was used uh, to get a look at uh, letter naming fluency. They also looked at phoneme segmentation and nonsense word fluency with that measure and all three of those were in the well below benchmark. So they determined in fact that this student did need to receive dyslexia intervention. They chose a particular intervention, in this case Sound Sensible, which is the pre-level of Spire. Here's the schedule they proposed and the group size. In terms of Accommodations at this point, they did. They chose not to list any uh, for this kindergarten student, and they didn't list assistive technology. They did, however, um, list some multisensory strategies to be used in Tier One support for the student, and they suggested um, the multisensory phonemic awareness teaching strategies, phonic strategies, handwriting multisensory strategies, and multisensory spelling strategies. So that was our sample with data for our kindergarten student. Now if we have an older student, and I've got several examples in this one, um, I even have some examples toward the end of students who uh, proved not to show the characteristics of dyslexia. So anyway, here we have Danny Dyslexia who did show characteristics of dyslexia and you see the completed information uh, on this student, including when the team met and when the results were shared with parents, and that it was, in fact, the eighth grade. Danny is an eighth grader, and this was the eighth grade problem-solving team that met, 
and uh, that did in fact include uh, at least one of the teachers who knows Danny. Um, the San Diego Quick Assessment was used. He scored at a fourth grade instructional level and um, that's the level, not independent level, but instructional level that we want to use uh, on our, for our screening. I think I misspoke on the earlier slide, but uh, Danny is in the eighth grade. His instructional level on the San Diego Quick Assessment was the fourth grade. Um, on the uh, core phonics survey uh, for nonsense words, he only read 27 of those nonsense word correct, nonsense words correct, which put him in an intensive level based on the benchmarks that go along with that tool, and that would go in this category. Um, now, on the uh, di the diagnostic spelling test, he got 15 words correct, which corresponded to a 3.1 grade level. So Danny is in a high risk level there. He is. Uh, uh, at least one or more grade levels below for spelling and in the intensive level for uh, phonemic decoding. He was able to read an eighth grade passage with only 80% accuracy. The um, team decided uh, and gave him, in fact, the placement test for this particular inter dyslexia intervention, and that is SPIRE. Uh, he tested into level one, and the intervention was scheduled for Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. His group size was going to be five. Um, the uh, rest of the plan that the team discussed included accommodations, which at this time they're going to start with just extended time on classroom assignments and on testing. Um, they did not list uh, assistive technology at this point. They may come back later and decide to do that. Uh, as far as um, classroom strategies. Um, the team suggested daily implementation of phoneme manipulation practice, syllable type work, syllable division strategies, SOS spelling, and uh, suggested that we use preventing academic failure handwriting strategies in the classroom. For our sixth grade example with Debbie dyslexia, um, Debbie you can see um, same assessment tools were used and um, she scored uh, with a third grade instructional level uh, on the San Diego Quick Assessment, and she um, got only 28 correct on the core phonics survey, and um, you see her scores in the other areas. And the she tested into um, level three of the SPIRE program based on the placement test. The team decided that she would need extended time, uh, read and write for Google Chrome as assistive technology for text-to-speech, also Bookshare, which allows her to have access to all of her textbooks uh, in a format where she'll see the pages on her Chromebook or whatever device she might have. She'll see the pages of the test textbook and the device will actually read and highlight the words that are being read uh, for each page within her textbooks. Um, to assist her in speech to text or being able to write um, uh, for written expression purposes, read and write for Google Chrome will be used uh, as a recommendation coming from the PST. Uh, in terms of what types of strategies um, for Tier 1 support, classroom, daily uh, support in all content classes, multisensory vocabulary strategies, including morphology clues, multisensory comprehension strategies, and so forth. Now, our 10th grade student, Diane Dyslexia, you can see how she did a little bit better in terms of her scores, San Diego Quick Assessment, Core Phonics, and so forth. And you see the recommendations at this point would be to use the rewards intervention, which uh, targets um, multisyllabic words, but doesn't necessarily work on the six basic syllable types. So this would be for students who need support with multisyllabic words, but do okay with shorter words. Now we have um, Denny dyslexia, who's in the seventh grade, and Denny um, actually passed the dyslexia screening, so the team uh, did not recommend any type of accommodations at this time, um, did not uh, recommend, as you'll see, um, any um, did not recommend accommodations, but did feel like that some assistive technology would be beneficial given that Denny is able to read um, grade level text with only 80% accuracy. So the point that I'm making with this example is that 
even though this particular student passed the screening, the team can still look at these results and contemplate what kind of support the student might need. And um, in this case, did recommend um, that the student take part in multisyllabic intervention using the rewards program and um, have support with assistive technology and the tier one support. Now Donald, who's in the 10th grade, passed the dyslexia screening <clears throat> with scores that are considerably higher. And in this case, the team looked at those results and said, intervention is not needed at this time, accommodations aren't needed, um, assistive technology is not needed, um, but classroom support might still be beneficial uh, because the child, the student failed our universal screening, even though they passed all of the elements in the dyslexia screening itself. So I hope those examples are of benefit to you. Uh, we may do subsequent webinars where we talk about data analysis and plan development, and you might benefit from looking at some of the discussion that will take part during those. Now, um, <clears throat> so Kind of in summary, after the dyslexia screening is completed, the PST needs to consider the results and determine the services that need to be provided. Um, if the student fails both the universal screening and the dyslexia screening, it is likely that the team will determine that dyslexia services um, are needed and will develop a dyslexia services plan. If, however, the student fails the universal screening but passes the dyslexia screening, then the team will be looking at what supports the student needs and will be able to consider uh, a number of things from um, either dyslexia specific things to things that would be appropriate for students who do not show the characteristics of dyslexia. For more information about Dyslexia Services Plan, you might look into the Dyslexia Resource Guide and also to the webinar that we have for the Dyslexia Services Plan. Thank you for taking part in this webinar today uh, and for um, sharing and for letting us share information about dyslexia screening. For additional information, you can certainly look uh, to the State Department of Education's website. Thank you for taking part today and have a wonderful and joyous rest of your day.